Thank you very much. So in this final talk of the session, I want to report on our experiments where we try to perform Higgs spectroscopy in high TC cuprates. And I will focus in particular on the transient nonlinear terahertz response to allow us really to distinguish the different contributions that really come together here and that show also a little bit the experimental difficulties to really identify Higgs in uh, these systems. So this is a project that started in the Max Planck UBC Uni Tokyo Center for Quantum Materials. And the key driver in the experiments I'm going to discuss today is uh, Min Jae Kim, uh, a PhD student that just graduated in my group. We enjoy also collaboration with Ryo Shimano's group. We perform high field terahertz experiments at the Helmholtz Center Dresden Rossendorf and collaborate there with the high field terahertz group. From the theoretical side, we work together with the group of Dirk Manske in Stuttgart and Lara Benfato in Rome and samples are provided by the technology group of Gennady Logvinov at the MPI in Stuttgart, and we have a lot of collaboration also in interpretation and linear spectroscopies by Bernhard Keimer's department also in Stuttgart. We are going to also discuss now the Higgs mode as we have seen in the previous talks, and in the field of cuprates we just discussed they are heavily damped, so the excitation scheme we are choosing here is this driving scheme coming with a multi-cycle terahertz and then looking at the third harmonic generation, and uh, Ryu has shown the pioneering experiment and now you have nitride here where you see then this characteristic uh, third harmonic generation coming up. I'm interested to apply now this Higgs mode as a novel probe and as a new criterion for superconductivity, as we have discussed this, to investigate the cuprates. For one, we are interested in this complicated interplay of orders in the cuprate phase diagram, and we hope to have a new tool to learn more about this, but then also to look into transient states where you really drive uh, superconductivity with light, as we have seen before. When we look at the cuprate, so here we are now performing, let's say, this drive experiment in different classes of cuprate superconductors. And then you see, you see something like a universal type of trend where you really see now these Higgs response setting in uh, below TC in these uh, systems. And you see also there are no sharp resonances because there's a lot of screening going on and interactions with quasi particles in these materials. You can see something in the raw data before you uh, uh, take screening into account, but then all of this structure is heavily uh, damped in these systems. And this is in principle the amplitude response of the driven Higgs modes in different superconductors. But we can also, since we are measuring with phase resolved uh, techniques, we can also extend this now into an amplitude and phase resolved uh, uh, spectrum. So we have now a full complex spectroscopy of the system. And then when we analyze this, then we can learn from these systems that in these cuprates, we are not only driving a, a Higgs mode in the system, but we are also driving a new mode. And back in that time, that was uh, yeah, still an unknown mode in the system, so we really have something like a Fano type of or generalized Fano type of resonance in these uh, materials. And meanwhile, we think that we are coupling to charge order fluctuations mediated by phonons in this system, because also in optical uh, pump probe experiments, David Hinton has shown that there are coherent order parameter oscillations also from charge density waves, and they proposed some coupling to the superconducting order parameter. And then now in our experiments, we can really see now by performing a full doping dependence, but also magnetic field dependence. And here I'm showing only the uh, changes of this very sensitive phase response that is going to wash out. We can really describe this yeah, coupling of uh, potential charge density wave fluctuations with the, the Higgs response in the system. However, now we see already, okay, we have now Higgs that generates third harmonic generation, CDWs that generate third harmonic generation. Moreover, if you look very closely in the first data, you saw there was even a response above TC in the system. So maybe even some kind of preformed pairs or some incoherent pairs in the pseudo gap range also can generate third harmonic generation. And we see these uh, finite signals up to temperatures where typically the Nernst effect is observed throughout different classes uh, of the cuprates in the system. So now, what do we really probe when we do this third harmonic type of uh, experiments? 
And here I will show that doing now something like a 2D type spectroscopy by adding now an additional pump allows us to distinguish these different contributions in the system and to learn more about the material and the interactions. So we are extending now this third harmonic drive experiment into a pump drive experiment in the system. So how does this work? This is our conventional third harmonic experiment. We come with our multi-cycle probe and now we have the uh, third harmonic generation. Now we come with our pump pulse and we are choosing here an optical pump pulse because this is a very well understood experiment in the pump probe community. We destroy superconductivity and then by terahertz or optical spectroscopy we have a very well characterized system. So we come now with this optical pump. This for sure is changing now our whole superconducting nonlinearities in the system. But moreover we know depending also on the fluence we are breaking Cooper pairs. Either we are breaking the long range coherence in the system or there are also very well known and characterized thresholds where we directly break the Cooper pairs into hot quasi particles. And this is something we know will also now overlap the whole response in the system. But now we use this time delay between the optical pump and the drive to basically expose this into the time domain in the system in the sense of a 2D spectroscopy. And this is now the experiment that we do. So now for each given uh, gate delay, we are changing now the pump probe time delay here in the system. And this is then such a time domain trace of the terahertz fields. If you perform now the Fourier transform along this frequency axis, then we see here, okay, we have here the fundamental, and then here we have the third harmonic response in the system. And there we see we have a very strong uh, modulation of the system, and then we also have a signal that comes here as a sideband in the system. And if you look at these oscillations, they turn out to be two omega and four omega oscillations of the driving field. When we saw this, we first thought, oh, maybe this is something like the second harmonic generation that was also seen, for example, by Shimano's group by applying a supercurrent, some non-reciprocal SHG. But as I will show here, in our case, this is really not the case. Because if we use here now the full 2D FFT of the system, then we get a plot like this. And here we can identify now, here the fundamental driving frequency of our terahertz field here the generated third harmonic generation. Then in principle in these cigars here, we have the pump probe signal. This is the interaction with the bandwidth of our short optical pulse in the system, something I'm not going to discuss here. But then we see here, we don't have second harmonic generation in the system. So our second harmonic generation, or our second harmonic and four omega uh, oscillations, they come from these sidebands here in this part. And this little notch here is due to the experimental filters in the system. So what is now this feature? Where do they, do they really come from? Let me give you a very hand-waving explanation on this. We come with our optical pump, so we generate quasi-particles, but these quasi-particles are there whilst our driving pulse is there. So in principle, we are driving now a nonlinear current with our terahertz driving field. So this now is modulating our three omega signal, so we end up with a three omega plus minus omega sidebands in the system. So now we understand these oscillations basically come from the quasi-particle response of the system. So now we are in the position, okay, now we can look basically at the 1D traces of this and now see how can we get some information maybe also on the intrinsic response of the uh, superconducting condensate, the, the Higgs type of response. And for this now, we are going to sit, this is the third harmonic generation in the system, we are sitting now at the maximum of this signal, and we look at this now as a function of this pump probe time delay. We know now, okay, these fast oscillations here on the onset, this is these quasi-particles in the system, but now we can look at different parameters. And here I'm, I'm showing you only one parameter on this, and this is now this amplitude of this pump probe signal in the system. If we probe this now as a function of fluence, for example, then we see we are going here with the square of the intensity. So basically we have something that we drive with the field. And then when we come to a certain threshold, which is exactly the known threshold from the other pump probe terahertz experiments, where we know that the Cooper pairs break into quasi particles, there we see we get a reduction of the signal because now we are depleting the condensate, and therefore we are also depleting of the signal. And this is an opposite trend, for example, what you see when you do spectroscopy of quasi-particles. Because in these measurements, you see after this 
pair breaking threshold, basically all the responses become larger. And here it's exactly the opposite trend. And very similar effects you find if you look at other characteristic things like melting times and so on and so forth, that we have exactly the opposite trends of the quasi-particle response. And that is something that tells us, okay, we are really here probing the condensates response of the system. And what is also interesting, if you look at this now as a function of temperature of this system, then you see, okay, in the first view this looks like, oh, this looks like an order parameter type of behavior. But the interesting part here is you're going to zero and you're going to change sign at temperature significantly below Tc already in the system. And what you see here is something, in principle, these are the changes of the, the third harmonic signal in the, in the material. And if you compare this with the onset of this uh, sign change, this exactly matches the onset of charge fluctuations in the system as also known from uh, linear terahertz spectroscopies in the system. And you have a signal also up to the regime where superconducting fluctuations are probed in uh, the linear terahertz response in this system. And that tells us now that really with these probes, we are really now probing really the superconducting condensate and its fluctuations. But the question is now, okay, how do we get the spectroscopic response and the time scales? And here we go back to our 2D spectrum, but then here we have one thing in the measurement, how this was performed so far, is if you look at your driving pulse and your pump probe time delay, then this part of the pulse has a different delay to the pump than this part of the pulse. So there are something like 20, 40 picoseconds in between. So you have a highly chirped signal. And that's why here you see also this diagonal of the, of the changes. So if you really want to have the transient spectroscopic response, you have to move now your gating pulse and your pump pulse in parallel. So that each time of this driving field has the same time delay to the pump pulse. And if you do so, your spectrum looks like this. And now you see all these uh, before 45 degrees type of things, all these changes are now happening throughout the spectrum uh, at the very same time. And if you look now at the spectral response in time in this way, then you see the third harmonic here is not that much modulated. The main modulation here comes from the fundamental. And also in agreement with our interpretation before, no second harmonic generation in, uh, in this case. And then here, these are the line outs now of the fundamental and uh, third harmonic generation. And now, of course, we have to take into account if we break the Cooper pairs, then we also break the screening in the material. So that's why more field can go into the system and drive a higher signal. So if we really want to have the intrinsic response, we have to normalize now for this. And if we do this, then we get this type of response here. And you see, okay, we have very strong oscillations on top here. They are linked basically to this driven quasi-particles in the system, as, we have, as I've shown you in the beginning of the talk. But if we ignore now these oscillations for a moment, then you see here our order, if this is now normalized to the equilibrium part, goes really down on a fast time scale to zero, and then recovers already on a few picoseconds. And this is really now the intrinsic response of the superconducting condensate. And these time scales are also in agreement, for example, with time-resolved ARPUS measurements from, from Fabio Brooks. Broschini, one of the organizers of this uh, workshop. And these are timescales that are significantly different from the timescales that we know from optical pump probe or optical pump terahertz probe experiments that probe the quasi-particles. So here we really see the intrinsic timescale of the uh, condensate and can distinguish it from the quasi-particle dynamics. And then we see here, okay, the puzzling thing is what are now these strong oscillations? And you see here, this is an enhancement of the THG signal by a factor of four, which is also then in agreement, for example, what, what Rio has shown us in, in the beginning. So it's also something one could say, now even though we break the condensate, the, the signal of Higgs oscillations or whatever could be enhanced by this case because you have this breaking of screening or something like this. So you can have an enhancement of the driven oscillations while at the same time the condensates become depleted. But then using this type of 2D techniques, you can really distinguish these different channels in this. And that brings me already to the end of my presentation. I've showed you using this third harmonic generation in the system, we can really now measure an amplitude and phase resolved uh, type of uh, spectroscopies. We have a full complex spectroscopy that allows us now to probe different parts, couplings that we see here. So this is really a clearly anti resonance, it's an anti resonance type of uh, phase jump. We can probe now uh, condensates and also 
potential preformed condensates in the system. And one way to distinguish now all these different uh, contributions to the THG is performing something like a 2D type of spectroscopy, where we can then distinguish on the different scales the uh, contributions from fundamental light, driving light, pump probe signals, sidebands, and so on and so forth. So this is just something that is sitting at the beginning. And I showed you this example, how we can use, for example, this technique now to really probe the intrinsic response of the condensate. And with this, I thank you for your attention. Okay, we can thank Stefan for being able to, Stefan finished you know, early, and so we get to uh, uh, we have more questions, and then we also uh, are a little bit closer, although we're still over time. So, uh, Ria? I have a comment and a question. The comment is the, our observation of the enhancement THG in iron uh, uh, based superconductors yeah. cannot be explained by the screening. Oh, this Changes, is not? Yeah, it, THG is indeed enhanced. Even when you normalize? Even the, normalize. Even when you normalize. Okay. So it's different. Yeah. Because I think uh, in, the, in the paper you did not normalize for the... It's normalized. For the, for the, it this did. was? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, then I've misread this. Sorry. And <laughs> the question is, uh, okay, the, this uh, signal under higher temperature you attribute is a preformed group of pair. But uh, for, uh, how, what do you expect if the photo excitation induced the preformed group of pair? Yes. If the, oh, if you would drive this now above TC, so we have done the experiment also of this above TC. The, the response in some sense looks very similar, but we haven't analyzed this yet in, uh, in detail. But you also see uh, similar um, oscillatory behaviors. You also get a, a two omega type of uh, oscillation, at least on, on strong fluences. So you still have something like a, a pair breaking that is uh, setting on there. But uh, the detailed onset, for example, in looking at this type of dynamics, we, we haven't uh, analyzed yet. So that's uh, something we have to do. But in principle, you can distinguish the enhancement. Or that is something, if there would be a real enhancement, so for example, that would be now one of the next steps. If you would try now this in a, in a phonon pump scenario, then, um, OK, depending on the results, as also you try in these parts. So then this should show in a clear enhancement on this. More questions? I have one. Uh, I just, just yeah. it's a technical one, which uh, go, if you go back to the, uh, you had a, something that was a fluence dependence there, yeah. right there. You have this proportional to the square root, and I'm trying to understand how that's a square root, because it, it doesn't look like it's ex oh. extrapolating to zero. No, it, it's something, you have an offset, there, and then you have a square root, plus you have also a superposition of a linear decay on this, widened with some, some, uh, some width. Okay, so right, what I should really understand there is that that's, you know, maybe proportional to the square root of i minus i naught. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? If not, then let's thank all of the speakers. <laughs> And we will reconvene at uh, 11 o'clock with our next session.